Welcome in once again, 4th and 5 family. I'm your host, DJ Williams, with my co-host, the one and only Josh Throne. Josh, it's been a minute, but there's been a lot going on that's kind of put us in this space of like, we just need to kind of sit back and see what is developing. But I think we're at a point now, Josh, where it's time to go ahead and kind of give our opinion about what we think is happening at the Razorback football program. Man, I feel like it's been a long time, but if you really look at it, it's only been like a week and a half. It's just <laughs> yeah. once we start getting in the groove of things, yep. it starts becoming a little bit addicting. You want to just put some more stuff out, and so much has happened with the transfer portal. Things are changing yeah. by the by the by the hour. So I'm excited to be back. Yeah. So uh, give a quick r- rundown for viewers uh, if you want to know what to expect in today's episode. Obviously, we're going to talk transfer portal. Uh, we believe when it comes to this area this newfound area of recruiting, that is. Um, We think there's uh, about three categories. There's guys that were overlooked potentially in high school. They get to a smaller school, and then they really start shining. Then they get opportunities at a bigger program. You have guys that went to a place highly touted at a high school, and uh, they went somewhere and probably didn't work out the way they wanted it to, and uh, they just decided to leave. And sometimes it's not necessarily the program. It's the player. We'll talk about that. And then the last group is you have these guys where we kind of understand why they transfer and they come in and make an immediate uh, impact. Before the portal, there were so many guys, Josh, that uh, were the guy that would lead their team to national championship contention. Uh, That transfer, Joe Burrow was at Ohio State, Jalen Hurts from Alabama to Oklahoma, Kyler Murray. I mean, I mean, so many guys that transferred and made impacts. Uh, Ryan Mallett, Michigan to Arkansas. There's, there's this space where we get why they moved, and they made a huge impact. Obviously, another one, Cam Newton. He went to Auburn for one year and won a national championship. So we're going to kind of break that down. We're going to talk about in-state recruiting. We're also going to talk about a future plan as far as us giving opinions and our own rating uh, with recruits. But all that being said, this is going on. Let's circle back around to why we finally decided to come out with an episode because we were kind of waiting on one essential piece, even though we knew it was most likely going to happen. We just had to sit back and wait. KJ Jefferson finally announcing the transfer portal. Now, like I said, Josh, that's a lot of moving parts and a lot of change in the college football landscape. But your thoughts when um, you heard about KJ? You know, we talked about this the other week, and the biggest thing for me was, you know, from a personal decision for KJ, when you leave the University of Arkansas, uh, a university that you've been at, that you've established an identity at, that you've broke records at, and you're going to leave them to play one season somewhere else, how is that going to taint your reputation? How is that going to taint your image here when you come back and, and you try to live life after football? Because again, I think the most important thing for KJ, at least what I think he should be thinking about, is life after football because I don't think he's an NFL caliber quarterback. So he's going to go play one season elsewhere. Most likely, I think TCU. They just had Chandler Morris, uh, son of Coach Chad Morris uh, at TCU, actually leave or enter the transfer portal as well. Being that he knows Kendall Browell's offense, I think uh, that's where you're going to see K.J. Jefferson go. Now, there is always the chance that he ends up back in Mississippi, maybe at Mississippi State. I don't think Ole Miss is an option. So I just don't know that it was the smartest decision on KJ's behalf, but I think Mm. fans have kind of moved on. You know, there's there's been a lot of rumblings on Twitter with people Mm. that they just kind of felt like, hey, you've done great for us. You broke records, but we're ready for something else. And so, again, I always try to think for these players um, in in regards to marketing, in regards to brand, in regards to how they're going to make money in the long term. You know that if you could walk off into the sunset as K.J. Jefferson at Arkansas, it means a lot more than it does if you just enter the transfer portal. Uh, that's where I don't necessarily think he'd be walking off to the sunset that he imagined if he stayed at Arkansas with this Bobby Petrino offense. I mean, uh, there, there's no doubt what K.J. did at Arkansas has been special. I mean, amazing plays, great memories, putting the team on his back. you know. But the change in offensive coordinator that we saw from – Kendall Browse to Dan Enos, um, he needs a specific offense to do well. And I just don't really see that being, once again, one year trying to figure out all the intricacy things, the the ins and out of a Bobby Petrino offense. That's going to be tough to figure out in one year and be successful. 
And uh, I, I think he knows that. I think the coaches know that. I think the boosters know that when it comes to where they want to spend this NIL money. And I think you hit the nail on the head, Josh. I can't really see him going anywhere else and making a huge impact in one year learning a completely new offense. So when you said TCU, man, it just makes sense. Uh, It's perfect for what Browse is trying to do. It would be perfect for KJ to be successful and have his last year of college football be special. Anywhere else, Josh, when I heard conversations about last year, you know, the people who are in, and I don't know any facts about this. This is just what I have heard, and it's even hard for me to believe. But before last year, when KJ was kind of trying to figure out where he was going to be, obviously it's all about the money. The college football landscape has changed. But apparently, I hate saying this because I don't know how factual it is, but I'm just going to go with what I said and give you my opinion. It came down to how much money that Arkansas was going to pay him. Uh, I think somebody told me, they said, KJ, we can give you $800,000. Even that just blows my mind. It does. It blows <laughs> my mind. All right, but let's just stick with it. And then I heard that he says, no, I'm hard at 880. I need that extra $80,000, right? Hmm. Let's just say this is true. Um, I'm not sure how the NIL works. I don't know if they had these boosters put all this money into it and now essentially these teams have a salary cap and the coaches have to pick who gets what and and able to make sure they can fulfill these nil promises and keep these players but josh if that were me in that situation and i was sam Pittman, and kj told me that i said kj look man i'd love to give you everything you're my homie and you're my dog but i'm just gonna be honest i don't think you're worth 800 thousand dollars um when it comes to this nil money depending on how much they have to give out to other players and i said kj we can give you all we got but what good does that do us if we don't spend it on offensive linemen to give you time to throw the football i just don't see the value in that because i don't think kj is a quarterback that can do more with less i think he needs a lot of essential pieces around him to be a very successful offense And so I just don't think I see the value in that. So then comes, where does he go if it's not TCU? I don't see who, what other school he negotiates with. Demanding that type of money and a booster thinking it's worth it in one year. uh, I I just don't see it happen. So if it's not TCU, then I'm very interested to see what happens with KJ Jefferson. A a lot of people don't know this, but the coach that was just hired, to take over Mississippi State. His name is Jeff Levy. He happens to be related to Kendall Bryles. Okay. And I believe Kendall Bryles' sisters, or sister is married to Jeff Levy. And they grew up in the same offense together. His dad, uh, Jeff Levy's dad, and Kendall Bryles' dad both coached together. So it's a very, very similar offense. And that's the only other team that I think he's could, he could step into and actually make an immediate difference because he is familiar with that Kendall Browse offense and what Jeff mm-hmm. Lebby's doing over there and what he plans to do over there at Mississippi State actually makes a lot of sense for him. So a lot of people don't know that, and I just thought I need to throw that out there because no. it, it, it would make a lot of sense being him going back home and going to play there with, with Jeff Lebby. So, you know, and you made a lot of points there when, when it came to what, what his worth was and what his value is, and fans have to just – just rub their earlobes and whoosha, you know what I mean? And just <laughs> come to reality mm. that this is the world we live in. Mm-hmm. And players are going to look at what they're getting paid and they're yeah. going to demand more money. And they're going to do it at 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years yes. old, because they have representation now. They yeah. have people telling mm. them, this is what other quarterbacks are making. This is where your value's at. And we don't need to settle for this. We need to actually press hard, you know, for, for 880 or whatever yeah. the scenario is. And so uh, that's the world we live in now. And it's, it's, and they got to mm-hmm. make as much money as they can while they're in college. Yeah. And, you know, I, but people in the comments, I know y'all are going to dog me over it because I'm defending it. But yeah. that's just the reality. Whether I like it, you like it, yeah. DJ likes it. Hey. That's what we're doing now. And so get with the program or, or, or don't. And I'm okay with letting him walk. I'm okay with yeah. letting him walk. But 
if it, complaining about the way it is today, yeah. you know, it no. isn't going to get you anywhere because it just it, is the way it is. It would be nice to have a little bit more transparency of the amount that these collectives have. And so we could see what percentage they're given here. But like you said, it is what it is. And I think it's important, too, for some people to put into perspective. When it comes to the amount of money these players are making, um, they're not making NFL type salaries. Some are, but not all of them. Um, I don't know the numbers. I'm not sure in advertising deals or TV time or TV deals, but college football makes so much money. And still, even after all of this, these players are getting a fraction of a fraction of the money that they and their play are bringing to college football landscape. So now do I think it should be done better? 1000%. Um, I'm not going to waste this episode on what I think the NIL should be. Uh, we've talked Please about don't. this because uh, we could go down that road for the next hour. Maybe uh, a, another episode, I'll just hop on my soapbox and tell you what I really think is the solution. But we'll talk about that another day. That being said, Josh, uh, KJ, uh, like I said, we appreciate what you did for the University of Arkansas. Um, but I think that's the – I think that's – is that is that it? As far as well, let KJ me let me let, we well, let, let, let me say this. You know, I think that KJ did a lot of great things at the University of Arkansas. I mean, heck, he he owns a lot of the records here. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about top tier quarterbacks that like have come through, years, but yeah, go he ahead. Did. Sorry. He put, he's yeah. played quite some time. Yeah. <laughs> when you talk about top tier quarterbacks who've come from the University of Arkansas, I don't list them. You know, up there within my top three, maybe even top five. I'm not sure that mm -hmm. I put them there. Um. You know, a lot of the top tier talent leaves early. Um, and even when you look at what KJ's done, when you look at the it from like a, you know, a snow globe view of the mm -hmm. entire the entire tenure that he's been our quarterback, we haven't been a dominant team. Yeah. We really had one good season and we have we haven't dominated year over year. And even the best of KJ has oftentimes been in games where we lost. Um, and so I think that. I like him. I love what he's done for us. I want to. I want to say thank you. Uh, but it, you know, we, it's we've been with him for so long. I think we forget. You know yeah. where what what we really have had in the past. Um, and so has he been a good quarterback for us? Yes. Uh, but I, I think that you know him leaving in the portal to me is a reflection of number one, the fact that these kids a lot of the times aren't. You know, there's not a loyalty to to the program, mm. and and two, um, that you know, this is where we're at with the transfer portal and and the amount of money that you can make, and and three, you know, it he's when I when I when I name the all time hog quarterbacks, he's not making my list, um, yeah. and I like him, and so and and so I I, I don't want to I want to be real, I don't yep. want to sound like I'm I'm hating on him, but I do want to be real, um because I do like the guy on, on a personal standpoint. Yep. It's just, it just is what it is. You know, he's, he's, it, it's been, it's been fun. Some of the plays, but I'm, I'm ready to get back to winning. Fair enough. Well, that being said, are we ready to close that chapter on KJ Jefferson? Yeah. Tell us what's next. What we got coming <laughs> in. All right. It's time to move on y'all. That's the name of this game. You got to move on with what you got. That being said, man, what a whirlwind of transfer court. People leaving, people coming, people staying. We're not sure where they are. But uh, I guess uh, as we kind of go down the list of a couple guys we specifically want to point out, um, obviously the big talker is uh, who's next for quarterback at the University of Arkansas. You have a guy in Jacoby Criswell still on the roster. Uh, Malachi Singleton still on the roster. Very talented young guy. We're not sure yet much of what he brings to the table just because we haven't seen it yet. Uh, but the uh, Taylor Green transfer from Boise State. Uh, Josh, I've been seeing a lot of people saying Arkansas has their guy. 6'6", 220, athletic, Cam Newton vibes. Pacino's going to do with him what he did to Lamar Jackson. And as soon as I heard stuff like that, the first thing I said was, first of all, Lamar Jackson. I mean, there's only a mm -hmm, few of right. those in the history of the game, uh, if any. And so let's pump the brakes a little bit. Uh, let's do a little research because, you know, Hog fans, we tend to get a little excited when we hear stuff and before we kind of start doing our research. And so, um, Josh, I'll kind of let you start on him. I'm going to focus a little bit more on the offensive line. But do we need to believe the hype that the Taylor Green transfer from Boise State 
conference champ winners, uh, very successful tenure there, is going to come to the University of Arkansas and be our starting quarterback. Well, let me tell you this. This is the thing that I think about Arkansas fans, and, and, and I'm guilty of this too. But when we <laughs> see 6'6", 220 at quarterback, that just gets us going. We start thinking, oh, my gosh, we finally oh, got man. a guy. Yeah, we can. We, athletic, we love it. But the fast, the ath- dual athletic. Threat. He can run. He can do all these things, and it's great in a video game. Promise you, it's great in a video game <laughs> when you can have a quarterback that can run. But in real life, in the SEC, you running in the Mountain West Conference does not make you special. <laughs> no. It just doesn't. Okay, so let's just get down to the root of things here. Let's talk about where this guy came from. Yeah. And again, I hope that he turns out to be everything that we want him to be. But you know, the, the, that inner voice in me is telling me to be a little bit skeptical here. Mm-hmm. So let's take a look. He started in Texas in high school at Alton, Texas, which is a prominent Texas high school. A lot of top-tier guys that come out of there. We've had quarterbacks that have come from Allen, Texas before. Casey Dick, might I say, and I love that guy to death. He's t- taking care of my little brother. Appreciate you, Casey. Yep. But – Taylor Green came from there. He actually ended up going to Louisville High School after that, transferred there. Why did he transfer? I'm not sure. Um, But he was being recruited by Bobby Petrino when Bobby Petrino was at Missouri State. All right, now take this into account. You've got a quarterback that's 6'6", 200-plus pounds in high school, coming out of a Texas high school. Why didn't he go to the University of Texas? Why didn't he go to Texas A&M? Why didn't he even go to SMU? Why didn't he go to any of the Texas schools? How about the states that recruit that place? Where was LSU when that came about? Well, where was, where was Alabama? Where was Georgia recruiting Texas at that standpoint? He ended up going – he was being recruited by a Missouri State, Bobby Petrino, and he ended up going to Boise State. Now, each season while he's been at Boise State, he's had to battle for his position. And okay. his stats, in 2022, he threw for 2,000 – Yards just over, barely. And in this past season, he threw for 1,700 yards in the Mountain West Conference. The best thing about this guy is his ability to run. But he's running in the Mountain West Conference. Now, if I'm going to catch him on a straightaway in a 100-yard sprint, is he going to take off and just stride out on me? Yeah, a lot like Matt Jones. I've heard some of the yeah. talking heads around Fayetteville uh, media kind of compare him to Matt Jones. I need mm-hmm. you to pump the brakes real quick because <laughs> this guy right here couldn't go to the NFL and put up 1,000 yards at receiver. That's just not no. true. Yeah. That's just not true. He's not Matt Jones. Get it out of our heads. He's a Boise State quarterback that threw for 1,700 yards this season, had 11 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Now, uh, other people have honestly compared yeah, him to I, I, say that. Say that again because I think that's important. 11 touchdowns, nine interceptions. 11 touchdowns and nine interceptions for 1,700 yards. K.J. Jefferson had a better season than that, I think. So before we get all excited, I think we need to pump our brakes. There's a couple caveats to this that I want people to think about. Yeah. Bobby Petrino is an X factor. He's been an X factor offensively for a long time. I'm not putting anything past what Bobby Petrino can do with a 6'6", 220-pound quarterback who can run. I'm not Mm -hmm. putting that past him. So don't take this episode and replay it to me next season (laughs) and tell me that – You're just saying this solely based off his performance at Boise. We need to chill out. Not including – him in the hands of Bobby Petrino. Okay. Correct. All right. yeah. Correct. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to tell a player that he can't stop getting better. That would be wrong, right? These guys can get better. But right now, he's 11 touchdowns, nine interceptions for 1,700 yards, and he's transferring into the SEC, and that was in a Mountain mm-hmm. West Conference, okay? So I personally think that what everybody here has been overlooking for a long time is our quarterback, Jacoby Criswell, a four-star out of Moralton, Arkansas, who loves the Razorbacks, who's been here, who's been paying his dues, transferred back in from North Carolina, and I think he's a star. I think as soon as Bobby Petrino actually gets some time with him, he's going to start realizing what he has on his hands. Now, I've talked to some guys, what I call my insider guys there at the university. And they've told me that since Bobby has been here, he's been out recruiting. And we've already seen it on Twitter. We've seen the videos. We've seen the posts. He hasn't got a lot of time to spend with Jacoby Criswell at all. Yeah. Obviously, they're not practicing yet. They're not getting into anything. I believe they've had some meetings. But I will say this. 
that when Bobby Petrino realizes what type of brain Jacoby Criswell has on him, he has a very, very fast, mentally sharp mind when it comes to all sports, all things. Just talk to the guy and you'll figure that out within the first five minutes. And he has an arm that can throw 70 yards off his back foot. A mm -hmm. lot of people are going to say, why didn't he play with, why didn't he play over KJ? Well, it's kind of hard to unseat a guy who's, who's had success in the SEC. So yep. if you're asking me, pump the brakes on all this talk about this Boise State guy coming in mm -hmm. and really allow these guys to fight and compete to see who's going to come out on top. And if you're asking me today, <laughs> Jacoby Criswell is your guy. Uh, I've had a few parents reach out to me, uh, relatives of these players, um, just curious about Bobby Petrino. I think they're not sure what to expect in the future. Should their kid stay? Should their kid go? And one thing I'll say, and you alluded to it about competing, it doesn't matter how long you've played. It doesn't matter how long you've started. There's no sense of, I owe you something. In Bobby Petrino's offense, the best player will play regardless. And so those players, if you're listening to this right now and you're worried about your position, you're worried about this, you are about to step into an environment of if you earn it, you will get it. Because I know a lot of players, Josh, sometimes feel like they've earned the right to play and they don't get the opportunity to play. That will not be the case. Uh, I think that had a lot to do with KJ not staying as well. Uh, you talked about all the attributes and the throw the ball 80 yards and run fast. It doesn't matter if you're a player who can't mentally be on the level of thinking at a very high level each and every play. Josh, when we played with Bobby, like it wasn't just the quarterback who was responsible for knowing what everyone's doing. Everyone was supposed to work in order to right. make it work. And I think the only time that there's going to be room or gray space in that area with Bob Petrino is if you're just a Heisman candidate, Lamar Jackson. But if you're not, you just have to be on a mental level that is almost second to none. Now, we've seen Petrino go other places and do more with less. And so, like you said, we're not knocking this guy from Boise. Uh, if he has all these tools, if he has the mental capabilities to perform at a high level, we're going to find out. Because if anybody in the country can bring it out of you, it's Bobby Petrino. And he's said on uh, interviews, I like the way he coaches. I like his mind for the game of football. We're going to find out how much you like it here in a little bit. But like I said, so for Jacoby Criswell, uh, Malachi Singleton, those guys on the roster, don't let this stuff get you discouraged at all. Um, meeting rooms are going to be essential. How well you know the offense? Can you see what is coming from the defense with the secondary rotation? Can you make sure you're in the right protection? Can you change the play of the line of scrimmage? All these things are going to go into account to your playing time. So I'm very excited to see the quarterback battle that is coming up because I think there is a lot of talent there, and he's going to give everybody the same opportunity. But at the end of the day, the best player will play. And a lot of people will kind of – uh poke at Jacoby Criswell. We saw what he did when he got in. Josh, there was no offensive no. line. And, There's and no offensive that's line. An, that's another thing with KJ. We're going to give him that too. As much as we yeah. kind of say this, that, there's no offensive line. That right. being said, they're switching it up. And uh, so if you're done with uh, uh, Boise, uh, if we can transition over to uh, the transfer portal, I kind of want to focus on these offensive line guys coming in. I want to I uh, put one thing in perspective for fans here. I want to put yep. one thing in perspective for him. When he came, when he when his last season at North Carolina, he battled out all the way to the end to be the starter against Drake May, who's now entering the NFL draft, and they're talking about him being one of the top quarterbacks that is going to go. And the, and, the, and the coach is here quoted this going into the first game of the season. There's very little difference between the two. If one quarterback is not moving the ball, we'll just put in the other one. We're going to give each one a chance, and if you're moving it, you're going to stay in. So. He got all offseason to be evaluated by the coaches over there with a top-tier NFL top caliber quarterback, and it came down to a game just to see who got, the, who got the juice rolling, who got the ball moving. This guy is a phenomenal quarterback. I truly believe he has the skill set to be a really good quarterback, and I know y'all are going to replay this if it doesn't come, <laughs> come, to, come to be true later. But I'm telling you uh, that I, I think that we forget 
uh, who who we already have and who Jacoby Criswell is. And I just mm-hmm. wanted to remind everybody uh, to slow down on that Taylor Green stuff. Let's just All let's right. just give it time to play out. All right, let's get to the guys up front. I think that's the biggest area of concern for the Arkansas Razorbacks. We got a lot of transfer portal guys coming in. Uh, I want to start looking at some game film. You know me, uh, Addison Nichols, transfer from Tennessee. Uh, Coming out of high school, this guy was the eighth overall interior offensive lineman in the country. He's a four-star guy. Goes to Tennessee. Seems like he didn't get the playing time that he wanted. And now uh, he is deciding to transfer. So I don't have a lot of tape to look at. He's 6'5", 327. That's perfect size for interior offensive lineman. And I'm just looking at some stuff from high school, Josh. And uh, I would say the things I kind of notice off that is uh, the guy's got good feet. Decent feet, that is. Mm-hmm. Um, he he seems to be physical at the point, but it's kind of hard to judge this looking at this type of tape, high school, that is. Um, and guys coming in so young, expecting to play automatically, I get if you're a four-star recruit. Like I said, there's kind of categories to these guys that transfer. Why are they transferring? I, I think maybe he was struggling at Tennessee to find his spot and compete at a high level. And maybe instead of sticking it out and working for it, he thinks moving somewhere else, especially a struggling offensive line at Arkansas, great opportunity to come in and at least get a chance to play off the bat. But I would say looking at tape, he has good feet. Uh, He seems to be a pretty good size. Physicality aspect, uh, I think we could get there a little bit more. I need some mean guys up front, some questionable character guys, like we'd say, but just mean guys up front. I think he has some room to improve there. But if I were to give my rating, I wouldn't necessarily give him a four star. I, I think we have a three star type guy potentially coming in. I would say maybe even two and a half. I'm very strict when it comes to stars. Uh, so. That's the first guy we got coming on. Now, this next guy, Josh, um, as we kind of take a look at his tape, Fernando Cormano. Cormano you like this guy. I'm not sure. I like him. This is yeah. one I like. Uh, this is going to be the category, I think, of a guy in high school that was potentially overlooked, uh, a, a guy that goes to a smaller school, and then they start saying, hey, this is a dude. This mm-hmm. is a guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he goes to a bigger school. Great personality. Confident as an offensive lineman, absolutely stoked, thrilled to be a Razorback. And so when I go look at this guy's stuff, it makes sense, Josh. I mean, he's an offensive tackle, 6'5", 314. In this guy's game film uh, at San Jose State, am I saying that right? Is it San Jose Mm -hmm. or San Diego? Uh, San Jose State, great feat, Josh. I mean, this guy's out here. Twinkle toes out here. Yeah, he, 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 he's fast. With, he, he's great getting to the point. He's great in space. I'm like, how did this guy get overlooked? And then I'd start digging a little bit deeper. I said, what was he like in high school, Josh? Huh. This dude was a tight end in high school. Oh. Uh, a, a, about 50 to 80 pounds lighter. Mm-hmm. So then I started saying, okay, it makes sense. It, it, it makes sense. And I, I'm doing this just based off what I've looked online. I'm assuming he was a tight end, and when I look at tape, that's what's going. The three-star recruit, uh, he ends up uh, now the seventh-ranked uh, offensive tackle in the portal, and I think this guy could come here and make a difference. Um, athleticism at that position. You think guys that went from tight end to offensive tackle, and it's worked. There's one guy in Arkansas that is the epitome of that, Jason Peters. Peters now, I'm not saying this yeah. guy's Jason Peters. All right, that's, right, that's high right. praise. But tight end at Arkansas, goes to the NFL, transitions to offensive tackle, and is a pro bowler for the Eagles for years, one of the best left tackles right. in the game. So very typically, excited athletic, about that. typically athleticism is not the issue when you when you have a tight end that goes into offensive line, no, right? No, so yeah. I, I was very excited about that. Uh, and now I got an interesting one, this transfer from Michigan State. Uh, I, he, he was Juco before that. And uh, this may sound weird, Josh. Kind of gets me a little excited. All right, because I, because I, because <laughs> we, we 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 played with a lot of JUCO guys. There's some dogs, uh, boy. There's some dogs. They some dogs. All right. Yeah. And I said, I feel like what is essential in the trenches. You, you need a couple guys, and I don't even know this guy. All right, right. but you need a couple guys that are dogs. And I'm kind of looking right. at tape at this guy. And there was one play. He has a guy down. 
clearly the play is over. And then he kind of has a dog in him. And then he finishes him. Puts him and I was like, okay, I see the dog. I see it yeah. in him. And so mm-hmm. I, I, I like him. He goes to Michigan State. Uh, and then he transfers. I'm like, why is he transferring if he's a good top uh, Juco player in the country? Well, they had a coaching change. And when that coaching change happened at Michigan State, a lot of players, I, I can see, maybe didn't like it. And I get it. It happens all the time. They want to move. And so, so this guy's kind of on the bubble for me. But I think he may bring that mentality of finally having some some dudes who are just some mean, nasty dogs. Right. Ain't going to take nothing from nobody. So very excited right. to maybe see his development. But as far you as know, the offensive line is concerned, I think we are doing somewhat fairly well in the portal, at least with two guys for sure. Hey, look, I, I want to see additions to the offensive line. I want to see some new guys in there to create competition because obviously what we were doing last year is not going to cut it. So any additions that I can see in there, mm-hmm. even if it's a guy who was at Tennessee and didn't play, uh, you know what? If you don't play at Tennessee, that don't mean you can't play at Arkansas. And he might have eventually played at Tennessee. Yeah. So I love. I just Maybe. I want to see some fresh feet up in yeah. there, some people that can move. You know, yeah. speaking of speaking of dogs, you know, Listen. we were talking about that, and it got me thinking. <laughs> if you if you don't have a handful of those guys on that offense and defensive <laughs> line, that your coach has to go, hey, listen, I need I need all the GAs in a meeting right now. You yeah. guys are responsible for chaperoning these guys on the weekend. I need to make sure yes. that you're following them to class. Make yes. sure that they're in class. Make uh-huh. sure that they're showing up. Make sure they're showing up and they're doing their study hall. And make sure mm-hmm. on Friday night they got a ride and everybody's getting home on time. That's what yeah. you need. If you ain't got a handful of those guys, you ain't doing it right. And I know yeah. we don't. Hey, listen, we don't want anybody getting in trouble. We don't want anybody getting in trouble. No, 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 no. no but no, that's no. why. We make sure we got a handful of GA yeah. chaperones ready at all times. But those are the type of guys you need because, hey, this is football. Okay, it's, so, a crazy, uh, yeah. it's a crazy sport. Let's try to paint the picture, and this is more locker room football talk. Football guys, they know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, these yeah. questionable character guys, borderline. Ooh, but you, you, the reason you need these guys, uh, I feel like <laughs> offensive line and defensive line at Arkansas right now, there's just too many nice guys. And when you're in the trenches, mm. and this is the epitome and tone setters of the game, you mm-hmm. don't want nice guys. You, you don't <laughs> want nice guys. You, you want guys that when people watch film uh, the night before playing your team, it, the, the opposing defensive line or offensive line is thinking, God, I don't want to deal with this dude all day. It keeps right. them up at night. Mm-hmm. I think when they watch film – Last year with the offensive and defensive line guys at Arkansas, I said, oh, man, I ain't worried about these dudes at all. Yeah, they seem cool. No, you need some guys that literally you're somewhat scared of. And mm-hmm. there was times at practice, Josh, we had a few guys. I remember D.D. Jones, bro. He had his gold teeth in, Louisiana, Baron Rouge doing his thing. Mm-hmm. But, man, when he would get mad at practice and start fighting everybody, I was like, God, I'm glad that dude's on our team, man. I, I don't want to deal with him <laughs> every single play. So I, I, I'm very excited to maybe potentially start getting some dogs up there. You need to – listen, you need to be able to look in the eyes at any given time. You need to be mm-hmm. able to look in the eyes of those guys and not have a clue what the hell they're thinking. Because <laughs> know, it scares you a little bit, right? <laughs> it does. <laughs> you, you're right. Because yeah. when you – when you you know when you look at a guy like that, you're like – yeah. I'm not sure I can mess with him. Like I, I messed with him, just mess with, play a little joke on him. He looked at me like, like he wasn't playing around. Like he might snap <laughs> my neck. He don't even yes. have a clue whether I'm whether, whether I'm joking yeah. or not. But those type of guys that made you kind of just feel a little uncomfortable in the room. Those are the ones yeah. you need. Those are the ones yeah. you need on the field. Yeah. You, yeah. you don't need a team full of nice guys. No. Uh, you need you know, a handful it, of them. You need a handful of them. Like me, I was a nice guy. You know, but it was balanced out because D Love was ready to swing on somebody and knock him out at any given second. You know, our offensive lineman. It was great balance. You need those guys. Uh, so that's offensive line. Obviously, we're going to keep track of more of that. Uh, but, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of portal guys because, Josh, I mean, it's changed. A lot of these kids in high school nowadays, they need to start getting a little concerned because these teams aren't necessarily wasting their scholarships on some unproven guys. They're just going to go out and get these total guys. Unless you're at Alabama, unless you're at Georgia, unless you're one of these top tier teams that still can just focus on top recruits in the country, everyone else is looking into the portal to see guys with a little experience. And that being said, uh, Josh, we kind of had some buzz. Uh, uh, Linebacker, obviously, is going to be another position we need some help with. You know a couple guys coming in from the portal from there? 
Yeah, actually, we just we just heard not too long ago that uh, Xavier Xavier Sori, five star from Georgia, six three, two hundred and twenty pounds, has committed to Arkansas. Now that just came out today, and mm-hmm. so obviously we've lost a handful of guys at linebacker. And I think if you looked at the different key position groups that we need to really be focused on, for me at least, it's linebacker and it's offensive line, just due to the amount of guys that we that we have left at linebacker and, mm-hmm. and obviously the, the refocus and rebuild on the offensive line that we need to have. So super excited about guys like that when you hear that we got a five-star from Georgia. He's not there by mistake, um, and, and we need to be picking up some of that talent. You know, you made a great point about high school kids. Uh, when you can pick up a five-star that's already spent some time at Georgia, yeah. you're not really focused on guys that are coming out of high school. So – if you're a high school kid and you're watching this podcast right now, what makes you the most attractive to a college program, not only your film, but if you're a guy who has great character, receives coachability, especially with this whole portal NIL situation, people want to mm-hmm. know that you're going to come in. You're not going to be a prima donna. You're not going to yep. be a headache because you think you're making too much money. You don't have to listen to anybody. And your grades. Do yep. you make good grades? Because if you're checking all those boxes – then they can have somebody that they believe that they can count on for seasons to come. If you're not checking yeah. those boxes and you're just a good athlete, but you're not doing all the other stuff, well, there's way better athletes in college I can go get. So yeah. how, how are you making yourself more competitive and how are you yeah. making yourself a better sell for colleges? You got you to gotta hit the trifecta. You got to have great character. You got to play ball and you got to make good grades. Otherwise, they're just going to go get guys from Georgia like that. So now, I love to ask, be able to see this. Yeah, people may ask too, five-star leaving Georgia, what's wrong with him? He could fall into the Drew Sanders category. Drew Sanders, remember, great linebacker for Arkansas, got drafted. Uh, mm-hmm. um, he was behind, unfortunately, Will Anderson at Alabama. I mean, right. a, a generational yeah. talent, one of the best players to ever do it in college football. And so it, it may be one of those situations that we just kind of get lucky, a guy who wants to play, but he understands, hey, it is what it is, you know, and so hopefully that works out with him. Uh, another name I've been hearing, I'm just trying to kind of wait on confirmation another guy from georgia uh db neilan green uh another one saw some playing time uh stats aren't all that great for playing in all 13 games around let me look at this how many tackles did he have total 12 total tackles so that's not a huge contribution at a high school highly talented top 10 db in the country he has two years left uh i'm on the fence with this guy i'll be honest um Went there, highly touted, probably with the Jordan. Now, we're going to say it's Georgia. A lot of talent on that defensive side of the ball. And he may be in that situation where he can come to Arkansas and be a standout. But then when he is up against top-tier talent, then he, it kind of averages out. But that's not a bad case uh, for University no. of Arkansas. We'll take that. I think we like that a lot. Uh, another position group, Josh, we want to talk about of not necessarily a lot of transfers coming in, but guys actually deciding to stay. Um, I'm not going to lie. I was worried about Isaiah Satania. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he was underutilized last year. I think he's one of the most dynamic players in the country, one of the most athletic players in the country. And I just wanted to see more of him. And I would go on a, on a limb to say if it weren't for Bobby Petrino being here, he may have been gone. But him returning, Tesla right. returning, Armstrong turning, what do you think about our receiving core? You know, I love the fact that Tesla is returning because he's a guy that I think was dramatically underutilized and he's, and he's a seasons player, right? He's, he's already proven that he can play. Um, and I don't think that he, he got the chance to really show what he's capable of. So I love to see the fact that he's coming back mm-hmm. because if you look at his size and his build, it's got NFL caliber receiver written all over it. He just needs to put together that film in the SEC to be able to take that next step. So love to see that he came back. And I think him coming back in Bobby Petrino's system um, is going to work really well for him. Being being seasoned, having the the college experience that he's had, I think that he'll be able to step in and be a leader in this first year offense with Bobby coming back in and kind of lead that that wide receiving core. Um, whether it's on the field or off the field, I think you need that a lot of the times in the locker room, in the team meeting room, being able to make sure that, hey, listen, when you got somebody off to the side, you know Bobby Petrino's offense, those plays are really, really long when you got to call them yeah. in. So being able to have an Isaac Tesla who can look over and say, hey, you got a slant while you're on the nice. field is really nice. And I think that just his seniority there is going to add value on the field at all times. 
you know, we we also have uh, Andrew Armstrong coming back, which is great. Uh, I think leading that's receiver, huge, Josh. it's huge, it's huge, yeah. It, it really is. I love to see that. I love to see when guys have some success, and he's able to kind of see the writing on the wall. Hey, I'm coming back. I'm going to be the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to get more film, and we can have a better year next season. So uh, I love the fact that he's coming back. You know, Isaiah Satanga, I think was again, like you said, very underutilized this previous season. And when I look at him, you know, I've I've kind of gone back and forth, flip flopped on who he reminds me most of. You know, I've I've mentioned things like Joe just from that kind of punt returning ability, but really, um, that the track speed that he has, um, it, being being a sprinter, it's mm. almost like we we talked about this often. Why don't yeah. we see him going vertical down the field? And what receiver do you remember going vertical and beating guys on a consistent basis down the field? Jerry's Jerry is right. right. Oh yeah, you're exactly right. So. I want to see Isaiah start opening the field up, pulling the safeties out, clearing clearing the ball for a lot of when, when you got a guy like that that you have to respect the deep threat, that makes all the other receivers better. When I when you know that the safety's got to run with him, you get a bigger field to play with. Your 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 gaps get bigger and you can make you can make plays happen. So I, I love that. And then when you got a guy that that superior talent of Jay Wright or, or Isaiah Satanga, yeah. you can just throw the ball because you know he's going to beat the guy deep. So I can't wait to see that. Glad the guy's staying so far. I haven't heard about him in, entering the transfer portal. Um, and so, yeah, I think I think, I think think wide receiver, I'm comfortable with where we're at. Um, yeah. Once we get this quarterback situation figured out, offensive line shared up, I think our offense will be in a good good position year one, Bobby Trino. All right, you ready for this? Listen to yeah. this, Hawk fans. Now, I, I don't – I, I... – I'm so hesitant to when I get to a spot of getting super excited just because we still got a lot of things to work on, things to figure out. But hear me out. You just named three guys that are uh, great hands, uh, playmakers, very coachable. And it just seems like when they're rolling, they got going like Armstrong, great hands, uh, Tesla, Tesla, obviously great hands and a dynamic playmaker like Isaiah Satania. You, 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 throw in potentially one of the greatest tight ends to ever have a career at the University of Arkansas and Luke Cause coming back after a collarbone injury. What he was started as a freshman uh, it was amazing. Excited that he even posted, yeah, I'll be back. I'm doing my thing. Give mm-hmm. him a Bobby Petrino offense, and I'm talking to you, mm-hmm. Luke. Trust me, you're going to be just fine, especially when you have help from other guys taking some of the attention away from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, another thing, um, these potential offensive linemen that also are going to make sure when it – there were so many times last year, Josh, that it just seemed like they had no idea what was going on. All those days are done. I, I, I promise you that. They're going to know exactly what's going to go on. So the biggest key component is what quarterback Bobby Petrino is going to be able to take and mold. Man, if he figures that out and you throw in a talented, young, Augustive running back, and Rashad DeBinion, and he's going to make sure they understand the difference between every play is not a home run, but I need these yards, I need these yards, and they're going to know who to block in pass protection. A night and day opportunity switch for your offense. And so that's something to be very excited about. And uh, I would love to see spring practice. I'd love to sit in these meetings to see how quickly all this happens. But the good thing with Bobby is um, he's not dealing with those young freshmen that he had when he first came. These guys have some experience, and I think he's going to be able to do a lot with that. So that being said, a a lot of moving parts. We would love to sit here and show you game film on every single guy coming in uh, and as far as transfers. And we're going to give you that the more time we have to kind of dig into it. But So that's the transfer guys and the guys that are staying. Uh, Now, when it comes to the, the biggest part josh that just hurts is when you have the best years of arkansas in bob petrino era a lot of those guys were from the state of arkansas and they just had this thing where they just didn't want to go anywhere they wanted to stay here and they wanted to be homeboys and they wanted to do something special when Mm -hmm. you start having your top players commit to other schools specifically Mm -hmm. in the sec bordering your state one i get it it's a mixture of how much money they're going to pay these guys but just losing in that recruiting battle, man, it's tough, especially when your guy from Palm Bluff, top player in the state, is not going to be a Razorback. You know, this is what this is what irritates me so much about, I don't know, the state of, of the program is that you get a guy like Courtney Crutchfield. 
who is arguably the best player, if not the best player in the state of Arkansas. And he goes to a Missouri. I mean, have you been there? Have you seen the stadium? That's what I'm have saying. You, I've have been you to Missouri. Gone? I'm like, why are you in Missouri? This, it has to not, be the money. Because it ain't there, it, it, nothing on Fayetteville. Nothing. That, and it's, it, it's got to be. I mean, don't get me wrong. The 10-win like season, yeah, that helps. Yeah. You know, yeah. you've, got, you've got wins. That helps. But we have to build a fence around oh. Arkansas. We have to instill the pride of being a Razorback again. This is mm-hmm. absolutely ridiculous that you you have a guy right there in the palm of your hand and you let Eli Drinkwitz come in and tell him to come to the University of Missouri. I mean, again, if you, I can't stand that place. There's nothing good about the University of Missouri. Did you I've see Drinkwitz there. post? Did you see his post on social media? Yes, I saw his post. His little gif. I wanted a gif, Jeff. I wanted it. I wanted to delete it immediately. <laughs> I can't listen. Put hands on that man, right? Took that personal. Listen, yeah, I and and I and I look at these guys and I'm going, God. Did, has he not been to Warren, Arkansas? Has he has he not been to Nashville, Arkansas? Has he not been over to North Little Rock? Has he not made his way into Central Arkansas? Has he not met some of these guys that have played? You know, visit visit the old stomping grounds of Oak Grove. Smell the grass. You know, mm. talk to Darren McFadden and t- he'll tell you what it what it means to be a Razorback. And when you do that, it, man, it means so much more. It means so much more. Yeah, you can go to Missouri. You think Missouri's going to continue 10 wins after 10 wins? No. No. <laughs> no, they're not. This is just a yep. this is just their up season and they're going to they're going to follow it up with some with some C with some 7 win, 8 win seasons. And that's just the way it is cuz it's the SEC. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you start thinking, man, is it NIL? And I hear people in the media, you know, guys that are close to the program, guys that are, you know, shaking hands with coaches and, you know, doing different things with, with the university. They'll tell you all about how the NILs, you know, this, that, and the third, and they know for a fact that, that they're, we're competing. But then you look at Courtney Crutchfield, if the NIL is all that, and this guy grew up in Arkansas, how are we losing him? How? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, you, you pointed out, obviously, uh, a down year for the Razorbacks, a great year for Missouri. We understand that. And I'm sure he was at games when there was about 18 people in the stands. I get it. Now, you go to Missouri, it's a different ball game, and it's just – that's where it's just – I think if they were to need help in this recruiting aspect when it comes to in-state guys – DJ, I'm, let, me stop, and, let me stop you. I'm going to tell you what they need to do. They need to call DJ mm-hmm. Williams right now. And they yes. need to ask you to be the director of recruiting for the program immediately. We had a really good guy named Butler I, Benton. We got a really good guy named Butler Benton who took another job elsewhere. I can't tell you who the guy is yeah. who, who's leading our recruiting department. But I'm telling you right now that I think it's very important to have a guy who played at the University of Arkansas that can relate to mm-hmm. the players. And I, it blows my mind how they bring you in for recruiting visits. They bring you in for the big recruiting barbecues. They bring you guys in, you, Darren, Felix, Travis, a lot of those other guys. And they mm-hmm. have you right underneath their nose, and it just makes no sense because it, you'd be perfect to recruit yeah. for the University of Arkansas. And I'm not saying that because I don't want to lose you on fourth and five. No, no. I, I just, I just no, no, know I that, 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 is, that is a missing piece to this puzzle you... to, to sell and to reinvigorate what it means to play for the University of Arkansas. No, I, um, Josh, you don't think I think that. I was just like, man, if I could have just been a part of that process and make these guys from the state of Arkansas understand how it's much more than what they uh, – I, I, I think about it. I do think about it. And uh, obviously I would love an opportunity like that. It, it, there's just so much more that goes into it, and I get that. But I, I think speaking to a lot of former coaches, players, and everything, I, I hope – and that's the thing that I think Bobby got a taste of. It's just like it's different here in Arkansas, and he's going to bring a little bit of that back, I would assume. It's people who understand what this program really needs and what it means. And I think when you start having people calling the shots who get that, man, it just – like I said, it just felt different when I went on recruiting visits at Arkansas. I was like, man, it's like a family here. And it's like it's just different than anywhere that I went, and I just wanted to be a part of it. And it made me feel special that I was from Arkansas. And I just feel like Arkansas kids don't feel that. And they need someone up there that literally is able to do that. Danny Nutt was that guy for Arkansas 
Tim Horton mm-hmm. was that guy for Arkansas. He convinced all these guys, man, y'all have no, what are we talking about? Mm-hmm. Let's build something great in your own backyard. Yeah. And it just felt awesome to be a part of it. So uh, I, I, we hate to see that these in-state guys that leave, you know, we always wish the best for them, but man, it'd be nice to have those guys stay and maybe we can have them on fourth of Iowa yeah. and maybe talk about the decision and what went into it. I would love that. Actually, you know, the people, uh, uh Courtney Presto, maybe we, that's what uh, we need to do. Let's happen. get that. Let's make that happen. Yeah. Uh, we, let's get, let's get in their mind a little right. bit. You know what right. I mean? And now what would help is if we could pay these guys, cause that's just the world we're mm-hmm. in to come in. So how about this? We'll put this out there. Uh, our viewers and subscribers, if you would like to get into the mind of why he decided to go to Missouri instead of Arkansas, I'm pretty sure we could convince him to come on our show and tell us right. <laughs> if we pay him. All right. So if y'all want to put together a little small little NIL fund here on 4th and 5 to pay for that interview, hey, let us know in our comments below. We'll see what we can get that number up to and offer it to him. And Because I, I said, I think it's essential for us as a fan base to know how did we miss on you? Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to know that. Right. I would love to. It's, unfortunately, that is, it's just going to cost a little bit of money. Uh, that being said, Josh, man, uh, if there's anything else you kind of want to touch on, man, we know it's been a lot with the portal. Uh, there's a lot of things we still need to pay attention to as it keeps on uh, revolving. Players start to commit. And, uh, man, we're, we're going to make sure we get you what you need. Yeah, no, I, I think that fans just need to think about this. This is the most important thing to keep, keep in because when we started this show – uh, earlier today, when we started prepping for the show, a lot happened in the portal within those that that ten hours yeah. of preparation, right? And so we've yep. got till January second, I believe, that the portal closes. So we still have a couple weeks that things can change and things can evolve. Um, and then again, the portal opens for football again in the spring. I think it opens for about fifteen days. So more things can change, more things can evolve, more people can come in, more people can leave. So until it's all said and done. You know, I don't think that we should get too excited um, or too sad. I think that we should just let this thing yep. play out. Stay stay in tune with us here at 4th and 5 because we're going to be bringing you updates as we can. And uh, we appreciate you watching our show. Hey, best way to stay in tune, Josh, subscribe. Hit that subscribe, subscribe. Button, or button, share it with your friends. And, uh, and don't forget, we always kind of want to tease this. We got big plans coming for the offseason. And high school recruits, if you're out there, and you, you you think you got what it takes? Well, we at fourth and five, we we want to know. Mm-hmm. We're gonna put it to the test. Fourth and five, we have big plans to hit the road, visit the schools of some of these top recruits. I want to work out with you. Mm-hmm. I want to get on the field and do the drills with mm-hmm. you. I want to watch tape with you. I want to sit there and talk to you of what you think you are good at and things you can work on. And then this is the tough part. We're gonna see if you got thick skin. I'm going to tell you what I think about you <laughs> and see how yeah, I'm just going to keep it real. And so, like I said, uh, you can take that and use it to grow or you can say, forget that dude from fourth and five. He don't know what he's talking about, but I think it'd be some great stuff. And we're going to start coming up with our one to five star rating of high school players here in the state of Arkansas on fourth and five and so i'm very excited for that coming up that should be some very fun things to follow and give these guys some opportunities to get some spotlight and a a look to their day-to-day activities of what it takes to get these offers from d1 schools but josh man it was fun i'm glad we got back on here a lot of things to look forward to like we said always comment like subscribe please share this on as many pages as possible we really appreciate the support it allows us to continue to give you content like this each and every week. I'm DJ Williams. That's Josh Throne. You're watching Fourth and Five.